Thank you everyone for tuning in for VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda. I'm Valerie Brown and this is our Beyond the Basics, the Depth and Breadth of the Digestive System webinar. So Ayurveda, in Ayurveda, digestion is one of the pillars of health and wellness. But there's also a theory that we're not just digesting food, that we're also digesting experience. So here to talk to us today about this topic, joining us back is Dr. Keith Wallace. He's the author of The Gut Crisis, as well as The Rest and Repair Diet. Um, Dr. Wallace is also um, the, a professor and chairman in the Department of Physiology and Health at Maharishi University of Management. Thank you for joining us again, Dr. Wallace. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Al. We're always so excited when you're here. And you always come back with a bunch of new projects that you're working <laughs> on. So what, do you, what do you have in the works right now? Well, most of my attention is on our master's program, which is actually uh, at the university, which is huge now. It started with maybe 30 students, a master's in Marshi Ayurveda and integrative medicine. And we get professionals from all over the place who want to add Ayurveda. So we get nurses, doctors, yoga, teachers, and they want to have a deeper knowledge of Ayurveda. So we have a three-year part-time program. And so that's been going great guns. I mean, it's, we've got you know, 300 or more people. We have an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, and we're about to add a new degree in aromatherapy, a master's degree in aromatherapy. So that keeps me really busy. But then in between, I try to write some books to keep myself lively. And so my latest project has been focusing on habit change. And I'm working with my wife and my son and we have a, a couple books that will be coming out in January, um, one called The Coherence Code and the other called Total uh, Brain Coaching. And Total Brain Coaching uses Ayurveda as its primary tool. You know, a lot of people use Myers-Briggs. They use different kinds of tools and businesses. But we think Ayurveda is the greatest tool you could have because Look at what it does. It assesses not just some personality, but it assesses your whole mind and body, your physiology. And there's a lot of good research to show that there's you know, epigenetics, that Ayurveda is a way of turning genes on and off without changing the structure of the DNA. It's a way of allowing us to express more of our full potential. So a very, very powerful tool. And so when you assess people, you're assessing everything about them. So we think that's pretty cool as a way of you know, assessing. And then everything we've read and everything we've studied, my son is a coach, he's what you call an agile coach, a scrum master. So he works, that's what he does full time. And coaching is this interesting thing because it's sort of, you, on the one hand, you're asking people questions and helping them set goals. You're empowering them to change their own lives, which is very much, in the spirit of Ayurveda, you know, getting inspiring people to make changes in their life. But also a coach is an educator. So you're educating them on, if you want to change a habit, say you want to lose weight or something like that, then you need to have a certain amount of energy because you got to actually rewire some circuits in your brain and you may have to reboot your whole digestive system. It may not just be that that extra weight is coming from eating too much, it may be that your digestion isn't working properly. It may be that your microbiome is off, the composition of it is off, so you have to reboot it. Your agni is just not strong enough to digest. Um, and it may be you're eating the wrong foods too. And a lot of this is just bad habits. I mean, we grew up eating a certain way with our parents and everything, and it's quite a challenge to suddenly change it. You take a certain amount of energy a certain amount of power. It's a simple habit, which Ayurveda says, start simple, don't do too much, just start very, very simple. But then you need a kind of process, a system of how to do that. You have to know who you are first. You have to be aware of who you are. We talk about it as discovering your energy state. And where the energy state really means, you know, whether you're Vata, Pitta, or Kapha, you're a V, a P, or a K. And then you need to harness your neuroplasticity, which is the ability of the brain to rewire itself, and your gut-brain axis. 
because both of these are playing a big role in everything you do in life. You, you're going to be drained of energy. You're going to be wiped out if your digestion isn't working well. One of the most obvious measures of how well a person is digesting is the AMA quiz, which you have up on your website. And that AMA quiz tells you right away, if you feel tired after you eat, that means you have undigested food in your system. It's kind of sticking in all the fine channels, the shrotas, and that is the sort of beginning of disease. That's the beginning of the imbalance of your energy state. So you don't have energy to change. You don't have energy to do anything. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get your digestion working properly. You have to get your gut brain axis working well, and then you can have the energy to rewire your brain, which is what you do when you learn a new habit. It's every experience changes our brain, everything we do. So if I'm going to lose weight, well, how would I do that? I have to decide, first of all, what type of thing I might do. Am I gonna eat less? Am I gonna exercise more? I have to pick one habit. Well, first of all, I have to be receptive. I actually have to want to do it. That's number one. Two, I've got to be simple. I have to pick a sit one habit at a time, and then I've got to do it in baby steps. And then I have to be able to focus my attention in the right way. I have to kind of, because where you put your attention grows stronger. So you need to be able to know just how to focus your attention in a particular way to change that habit. So you have to set up a plan, you have to have goals, you have to have some accountability. If you don't have accountability, you can never really, you know, stepping on a scale might be the simplest accountability. And then it really, really helps if you have a coach. There, you know, in our system, we use four types of coaching. So there's self-coaching, you know, like self-pulse is a fantastic way of telling your imbalance or not. Keeping a journal, we do that in the rest and repair diet. Keeping a journal is really important because you're the best judge of what food is good for you. Some people can handle sugar, some people can't. Some can handle gluten, some can't. Some can handle dairy, some can't. Forget what you read in the papers. You have to be self-referral. You have to figure it out for yourself. So keeping a journal, you can be your own self-coach. But, you know, we get caught up. We're so deeply influenced by our environment that sometimes we walk in, you know, let's say I want to quit smoking. I don't go to some place where people are smoking. I try to stay away from friends that are smoking. You have to be aware of the fact that everything in your environment is triggering your bad habits. So you want to start a new habit. You know, it's like the old, bad habits are like super highways in the brain, which have been going on and on, really hard to tear them down. Best you can do is build a new road, build it up, keep reinforcing it day after day, and then you'll have a new highway and this people the information will stop going on the old highway it'll go in the new highway mm -hmm. and a lot of this is driven by what you call your dopamine feedback system mm -hmm. you know you take that sugar or you're looking for that chocolate bar it's part of this dopamine feedback dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's associated with addiction and often bad habits it's kind of pleasure and so you know a lot of our bad food habits We've reinforced them for years and years. And it's kind of hard to break them because this, it's just the anticipation. Oh, if I have those potato chips, if I have this chocolate bar, if I have this ice cream, I'll feel so much better. And sometimes you don't even feel better after you eat it. You go to a restaurant, you pay $100 and you come out feeling sick, you know? It's a bit bizarre, but it's the anticipation, that dopamine feedback system. So you have to create a new habit so the old ones will just literally die away. It's a use it or lose it phenomenon. If you create some positive habit, that will change. The old habits just go away by themselves. They don't completely go away. Addictions are very hard to get rid of. Sugar addictions, all these kinds of things are very hard to get rid of. But if you're on a new track, building up a new highway, it's a much better chance the old ones will go away. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of different things to consider on this. You have to celebrate each step, even if it's a small step. And you always have to have feedback. So we said self-coaching, 
But then you need, really, you should have personal coaching. All these people were training at the university, this master's program, we're training them as health coaches, really Ayurveda health coaches. And they are gems. They can guide you. In, I mean, great if you can see Avijah, fantastic. But what are you going to see Avijah 10 minutes, 20 minutes for a whole year? Then you'd be nice to have someone you can Zoom with and talk with. And I tried this and I didn't do that. And they're knowledgeable. So a personal coach is really good. And then it's ideal if you can have a group coaching. So you can join a group. Either maybe it's just a friend, a partner, and you just talk about it. You're both pittas. You're both trying to deal with anger. Oh, boy, I have to eat on time. If I don't eat on time, I really blow up. I got to make sure I have lunch every day. That's number one. You know, George, did you have lunch today? Yeah, I had lunch. Did you have lunch? Yeah, I did. So we're doing good. Good. Okay, we checked in. We're doing good. That's And then if you have a big group, of, you know, 10 pittas, you don't blow up at some point. You can have fun talking and comparing experiences. And then the fourth one is environmental coaching. You really have to deal with the environment. So if you have a problem with eating too many carbohydrates or sugar or whatever, you just can't bring them home. They just shouldn't be in the house. I mean, why tempt yourself over and over again with things that you know aren't good for you? So you have to change the environment. You have to look and modify your, modify your group of friends. Do you want to practice TM? It's ideal if you do it with a group of friends because then you'll each be comparing experiences, having a good time. Hey, if you really want to do it, you move to Fairfield and you got a whole community of people meditating. It's very, very helpful. It reinforces it every day. So there are a lot of tricks, there are a lot of rules, a lot of strategies for habit change. And core to everything in Ayurveda is digestion. You don't get digestion right. You're, it's just going to be hard to change anything. It's just the, the key to health. It's the key to energy. You want energy, get your digestion first. Then you can make changes in your life. So that's sort of the foundation of the program there, harnessing this gut-brain axis. That sounds really exciting, Dr. Wallace. Can't wait to read that one too. Good. Uh, and, and now you're touching a lot on... Your, your first few books, well, I know you have books before even these most, most recent yeah. ones, but the most recent ones, The Gut Crisis and The Rest of Our Repair Diet, we, and we met with you a lot after those came out. Um, we'll link the, the other webinars we've done with you, but those were hitting hard on digestion, and now it sounds like what we're moving into or what you're moving into with these new projects is more about experience and habit which right. is what makes this webinar perfect for us to talk about today too, because there is this a little bit of untapped idea in Ayurveda about how we're actually digesting experience. Yeah. I, I love that idea. That yes. Is, tell, tell us your insights. Yeah, on no, it's something that Marishi brought up years ago and it was, it was such a beautiful lecture when he gave it. It was all about how, each sense, you know, is like a, a road in. So you taste something, you smell something, you see something. These are all these powerful experiences. Now, we know from neuroscience, they change the brain. They change the connections in the brain. They change the balance of chemicals, serotonin, dopamine, any of these chemicals. So every experience we have is changing us. The question is, can we use those experiences? Can we digest them? And the, what Marishi says, the ultimate is to digest them to bliss. So every experience, whatever we're having, whether it's the smell, whether it's this visual, we're actually seeing the full glory of that experience. We're seeing the underlying kind of unified field of that experience. We're, ex we're experiencing bliss all the time, everything that comes into us. And to me, that's a rewiring of the brain and the gut-brain act. It's, it brings up an incredibly interesting topic, ojas and soma. And, you know, you think, okay, if I meditate, that rewires my brain, I'll get higher states of consciousness. But it's not just the brain that's involved. When Maharishi talks about these things, he says, and it's super powerful in Ayurveda, finest product of digestion is ojas. So you're digesting food. What's the ultimate. It's this chemical, ojas, which Marshi sometimes calls soma, sometimes calls ojas. Soma is kind of a 
a bigger definition of it, more on the consciousness level. But what does that mean? It's a chemical. Now, chemicals, we know, for example, the gut bacteria produce thousands of chemicals which influence the brain. Our brain produces chemicals which influence the gut. So it's a two-way street. And it's one of these deals where if you want to experience the world in a more blissful way, a happier way, it's not just the brain, it's also the gut. Serotonin, one of the most powerful chemicals. I mean, all these mood um, drugs, you know, whether to, to decrease depression, decrease anxiety, they're all based on trying to keep serotonin at a higher level. They, they try to limit the uptake of serotonin in the cell so more serotonin is available. And that, you know, thousands, millions of people are taking those drugs because they want to feel better. Their normal digestion experience isn't good. So they have to take a drug to modify the chemical environment in their brain so they have a happier experience of the world. But there are side effects, there are all kinds of problems, you know, people have to take them fine, but if you could help them, what would you do? It's very interesting, you know, we used to think it's all in the brain, you have to take some chemical for the brain, but now recently they just found out that serotonin, which is 90% of it is produced in the gut, we only produce a little bit in the brain, but it doesn't easily get into the brain, there's a blood-brain barrier. So what we produce in the gut stays mostly in the body. And now they just found out that there's a whole nerve, the vagus nerve, which we've known for years, very powerful nerve, and that serotonin from the gut can go up to the brain that way. It's like this whole, and the bacteria and everything, the balance of digestion, it's all influencing this. So we're understanding now that if you want to be happier, it's not just the brain, it's the gut too. And this is not just for happier, but higher states of consciousness. The whole concept of the evolution of higher states of consciousness is based on this kind of biochemistry that the brain has to change, but the gut has to change. Marcia often says, you have to be stress-free in the brain and stress-free in digestion, which is very odd. Nobody could, I could never understand those two. And now that I see how beautifully they're connected with all this new research, to me, oh, wow. That's what it means. When you evolve, when you change your habits, what happens is you rewire the brain and you rewire this gut-brain axis, which involves the nervous system, the digestive system, the immune system, the endocrine system, and all the gut bacteria. So it's huge. It's everything. I haven't heard and that term before, but will you say it again? Stress-free in the mind and stress free in the mind you know what you've heard you know that if you want to kind of evolve if you want to be a happier person then you have to get rid of the stress but but marcy in in the same breath in these tapes he'll talk about stress-free nervous system and also so stress-free digestive system only in a stress-free digestive system can you produce ojas and ojas or soma is the only thing that allow you to have higher states of consciousness it's all interrelated. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. Really powerful. I know. Isn't that cool? So then what kind of, how do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Marshy gave us a lot of great techniques. He gave us TM and a lot of people, you know, just practice TM. But then we find, wow, they're not eating right. They're not exercising. So then Marshy realized there was a lot more stress in the world than he had anticipated. And he really encouraged people to learn about Ayurveda. It wasn't enough just to do TM. You really had to take other parts of your life into consideration. And so he spent a huge amount of time unfolding Ayurveda. And really, Ayurveda gives you all the secrets there. But a lot of Ayurveda has been lost. So in a way, you have to combine Ayurveda with integrative medicine. You have to really look everywhere. At one point, I asked Marisha, I said, well, why are we looking into Chinese medicine? Why are we looking into homeopathy? He said, anything that works is Ayurveda. <laughs> so it's a big area. We want to use Ayurveda as the core to help us change our habits, to help us develop these kind of changes. And transcendental meditation is an integral part of Ayurveda. 
So we want to use all these technologies. And you can't do it all at once. It takes time. The brain is a physical. The gut is physical. They take time to change. So some habits you can learn quickly and other habits take longer. And you know, you have to have a lot of support, a lot of help, and a lot of knowledge. And so you guys provide all the wonderful products. You provide brilliant knowledge. Your website's full of wonderful knowledge. And it's, you know, we're providing at our university a whole degree program to train people. And, you know, including all that we just opened a Panchakarma clinic on campus, affordable Panchakarma. I mean, we're really trying to bring Ayurveda to the world. This two books I've been working on uh, with my wife and with Ted Wallace, they're all aimed at business, using Ayurveda to, without really inundating people with a lot of Ayurvedic terms, but using, you know, very simple terms to help them change their habits, because that's what Ayurveda is about, changing habits, getting a good daily routine, getting a good seasonal routine, being aware of who you are and what's best for you, what's the best exercise, what's the best sleep, all these things you need to know, what's the best diet, what are the best herbs for you. So these are all things that are there to support us, and now we wanna create a system of coaches and helpers so we have TM and Ayurveda and this whole support staff to all help us of all. Mm. So we can produce Ojas and Soma. This is really exciting. And every experience we have can be blissful. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and I feel like you can, I mean, we're coming up on the holidays too, where food and digestion is a big focus. But oh yeah. I mean, when, when we are following the rule, I'll say rules loosely, but the, I guess more the recommendations of Ayurveda about eating in, in a sure. proper way, settled environment with the company of sure. good family and good food and bliss. Sure. It really does create a different experience. Than There's a way around it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a secret for you. Tell us, please. <laughs> You see, Ayurveda is very kind. Ayurveda realizes that there could be these situations where <laughs> if you're super rigid, you, it'll just make things worse. So Ayurveda has this wonderful term, okasatmya. You ever heard of that one, okasatmya? I love that term, yes. It basically means that you, you can sometimes break your habits because the food you're eating, maybe it's not ideal for you. In fact, we know it's not ideal for us. But because it's something our grandparents gave us, something that makes us feel good, something where we fit in to that social environment of our family, we're not, you know, trying to be, no, I can't eat this. No, I can't eat that. You know, we're not trying to upset the whole celebration of the season because we're rigid. It says, no, you can be flexible. That's okay. A few times, it's all right. And that's the kindness of Ayurveda, that a little, it, you can give a little bit, as long as it's something you know will psychologically help the whole atmosphere. And that's really what Okasapni is, you know, making exceptions when it comes to foods or laws that have been there as part of our natural heritage. And it's our, what our grandparents would have given us, what our parents would give. That has a great psychological effect that can make up for any mild, adverse physiological effect. Yeah, I love that. And right there, that's, that's about digesting experience. It is. You're okay. absolutely right. That brings in the whole, not just being so rich on the food, but recognizing that how you relate to other people, that's part of the experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Now... Um, thinking about digesting experience and what about unpleasant experience? I mean, if, if we, yeah. if there, I mean, trauma, that's a big point in Ayurveda. Yeah, how yeah. no, I mean, trauma. they're there, people have them. And, and um, you know, some people, we know that if a child's been abused or been through a difficult situation, that affects their whole life. They're much more susceptible to mental health, to addiction. It rewires the brain. So it's huge what happens, those bad experiences, PTSD, all those things really mess up the brain. And, you know, we know that things like transcendental meditation, Ayurveda can help. What can we do? It's tough, very, very tough. 
counseling sometimes is really important, but a lot of the new study coming out with PTSD really showing that TM is one of the most effective techniques for doing it. We know certainly all the habits in Ayurveda are good. Mm -hmm. So we have to use everything we can to help ourselves and our friends and recognize that addiction can be bad habits can be they can come from childhood and they can be very difficult and um, you use every modality you can tm is a great one a lot of good research ayurveda is fantastic but it takes time you got to build new highways you got to build new pathways and you got to be compassionate more than anything you have to recognize they may need to go to a rehab center. They may need a certain kind of program that's, you know, a little more powerful, like Panchakarma is a great thing. So they may need something more to get rid of the toxins, to get rid of all those networks that are that were formed in a, with very bad experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's more along the lines to not just physical toxin, but emotional toxin. Oh, yeah. Emotional toxins are more powerful. I mean, you know, we look at how people make decisions and, okay, the intellect's involved, the mind's involved, should I do this or not? But actually, what really makes the decisions are emotions. They're deeper, a deeper level of the mind. And, and if, if the emotions are upset, the intellect gets upset. So you have to take care of the deepest levels. If you communicate with somebody and you do it in such a way that you hurt that faint level of feeling, you're damaging the very essence of the person and nothing will be accomplished. It, it's, it's just foolish. Anger, in an intense kind of, you know, screaming at people, it just does nothing. In fact, it does harm. It, it, it damages this faint level of feeling. So we're talking about metabolizing bliss, metabolizing experience. Communication is huge. We talk about that a lot in these books because in a company, communication between team members, between bosses and employees, I mean, it's huge. And if you know who you're talking with, if it's a Vata person and you're a Pitta person, you know, I can't come down on them too hard. This, they, these people are more sensitive emotionally. They're more gentle. They, they, they need to be dealt with in a very easy manner. I have to help them because they can switch their focus. So I got to very kindly keep them staying focused on this one project and not get it split. Into, keep them rested as much as possible. Keep the digestion good. But they're the creative geniuses. They're the innovators. They're the ones that come up with all the great ideas. So they're precious to me. Why would I yell at them? What good would that do? It's only going to damage that faint level of feeling, and I'm going to get nothing out of them. So you have to recognize the pittas are the purposeful producers. The kaphas are the very thorough and detailed procedural people, and the vadas are the very imaginative. They love options. They love marketing campaigns. They love advertising. They have great ideas. They're all important on a team. Google did a big study on what made the best teams. It's called Project Aristotle. And, you know, you'd think, oh, well, I'll pick the most intelligent people. That'll be the best team. Not at all. They tried everything. They, they, they could not find anything. And finally, it came down to two things. Well, more than two, but two big ones. One was your ability to let everyone talk in a team. So everyone had to have more or less equal time talking. You couldn't just be dominated by one person. or the, And if you had everybody talking, and not everybody talking, but also people really listening with sincerity, that they might repeat back what the person said. They looked them in the eye. And that created what they called psychological safety and trust. And when you had psychological safety and trust, the teams were fantastic. That biggest factor. You know, they have to have a purpose, too. If you give a team a purpose, that's great. There are other factors in there that are also important. But the big one was psychological safety, which was just based on letting everyone talk and really listening, not just, you know, 
not of this old command and control where I tell you what to do. Ridiculous. Doesn't get anything done. I mean, it did at one time. But we live in a world where the customer is everything, where everybody has to listen, where everybody has to be quick to change. And that doesn't happen unless you have this kind of mindset where, as you said, every experience you're getting turns into bliss. It has to be a growth oriented mindset. It has to be a happy mindset. It can't be fixed. It can't be rigid. So you got to get your doshas. You got to get your energy state in balance. If your energy state's out of balance, your mindset, every employee in the company, it's not going to be a very good mindset if they're in balance. Pittas are going to be angry. Vodas are going to be all over the place. Kapas are going to be lethargic. It's a disaster. So you got to get every person with a growth oriented mindset where they have a purpose and where they feel empowered. They feel like, hey, you love me. I'm part of a family. I'm working towards something. And the, literally the five biggest companies in the world, you know, like Apple, Facebook, even Microsoft, all these big companies, Google, they all have this kind of agile, growth oriented, coherent mindset. That's why they're successful. They care about the customer. They're totally customer centric and everything is based on what the customer wants and then they're really quick they change the code they change the website they change things so fast you click on it one minute it's changed because they know that's what the world is today mm -hmm. and they're trying to create that experience of bliss for every customer they're trying to delight every customer mm -hmm. so so it's interesting there's a lot of uh, adaptability in all of this too, where it's, I mean, you're talking about the big companies doing it, but then it's, you know, with, with the Ayurvedic mindset too, it's what can we let go of? What can we change? What habits are we bringing in? And how do you, and you said the word empower too, which, yeah. you know, that's, that's when I think one of the biggest takeaways from Ayurveda is that it's really just honing in on empowering you as an individual. And giving you the knowledge so you can help yourself. <laughs> right. If yeah. you go to medicine, you're, you're dependent upon the doctor, and you have to do what they say. And that's often ridiculous. In Ayurveda, you are empowered to make the changes in your own life. And you're given a kind of a formula, a system to do it. And that's huge. Mm -hmm. Self-knowledge, self-empowering. That's great. That, yeah. you know, there's nothing like it in the world. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, we're, I'm excited to, uh, to read your new books, Dr. Wallace. And cool. if, if you need some test subjects, come visit us at Maharshi Ayurveda. We're happy to <laughs> get all, right. all of our employees. All right. yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, but we'd love to hear from you. What final insights do you have or encouragement that you could share with us today? Well, I think, you know, it's, we have a lot of great opportunities here. And I think Moppy is really playing a key role in everything for our program at the university. It provides these wonderful products that are really, you know, you, you're not sure what you're buying on the internet these days. And so you need, uh, uh, you need to have a trust. The customer has to need to have trust. And I think we need to have better trained people giving the knowledge. We need really good products that are tested all over the place. It's a big job getting Ayurveda to the world. People think of India, they don't think of health. People think of something ancient, they don't think of health. And so we have a lot to overcome to do that. So I think everything that you guys are doing, everything that uh, Marsh University of Management is doing, we just all have to get together and really help each other, educate people that this is simple stuff. It's just like changing simple habits and um, we can empower people to do it. Mm -hmm and create all of that bliss in the process. <laughs> there you go. Every experience should be bliss. I love that. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace, for it's sharing a pleasure. today. Yeah, and we will keep everybody posted too. We'll link down to your website so that we can be aware of whenever the books, the new books. Yeah, come. they should come out in January. So if you want it, we can do you know something specifically on them. We could have Ted on too. We could have sounds some fun. Great. Yeah, sounds he's, great. He's the expert coach. <laughs> Great. Well, we look my wife's book is on deep beauty using essential oils for skin care. And um, I can't wait till that book comes out. She's really close, but that'll be a fantastic book. 
Wonderful. Well, yeah, we, you're always so inspiring, Dr. Wallace, too, because I say this to you all the time, too, that I love the speed that you work at, because every time I connect with you, it's like, here's what I have going on now. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, you know, uh, it's interesting. I think you need every little stick you can hold up for Ayurveda. You need to do it from every angle, whether it's business, beauty, gut, every, you know, it's so encompassing that we need to kind of integrate all these different approaches together. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm loving this new aromatherapy masters we're going to have. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, excited about that. Talk about bliss. I mean, aromatherapies are really blissful. They really are. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we look forward to having you back on the webinar. Okay, soon. great. Well, thank you. Okay. And Thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, please let us know if you have other ideas for webinars that you'd like us to host for you. As always, we appreciate your attention and we hope we see you again. Thank you.